Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Why don't we feel Earth's movement as we orbit the sun? You know, maybe a better question is, why would anybody think we should? Oh boy, this is going to be one of those days. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and Gladys... <coughs> let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. A couple of weeks ago I had an exchange with a flat earther named Chris Berry and normally I don't pay a lot of attention to Chris. He's a guy that thought he could duplicate the Cavendish experiment with two trailer hitches and a couple of kettle weights hanging from a stepladder in his garage. I don't think I need to tell you how that turned out. But Chris came up with the concept of rigid body rotation with translation. Let's listen to what he said. All right. I'm going to try. Oh, he went on mute. There we go. So the simple answer and the basic answer of what it is, is called rigid body rotation. Rigid body rotation just simply means something that's moving in a, in a circular path, right? An orbit, if you want to call it that, or a, a um, merry-go-round or whatever. Translation simply means adding a lateral mo motion, a forward motion, a backward motion, whatever, right? And it's, if you were to imagine uh, a merry-go-round on a train track, if, you, if the merry-go-round is standing still spinning, that's rigid body rotation. When you add the forward motion on the train track, that's called width translation. What that does is, is it changes the angular momentum of the merry-go-round as you go. If you can imagine the merry, hey, thank you. So if you can imagine as the merry-go-round is is as it's spinning, as it's spinning, let's say it's spinning north, and you're going north. You're going to add an, uh, an acceleration to that. And as it's spinning south, as you're still going north, it's going to decrease the acceleration of the, uh, of the body. In fact, the video that Channel Q has on is a really good video that I've seen before that explains what I just yeah, explained, but way more complicated and better. Well, do you understand from looking at that why you're wrong? Hmm, crickets. Actually, Chris Berry did a pretty good job of describing rigid body rotation with translation. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any idea why that is the wrong physics to try to apply to a, an orbiting body like the Earth orbiting the Sun. Now, this apparently began with a video put out by a YouTuber named Chris UK. He made about a 27-minute video that was picked up by Globebusters. And now it's being waved around as if they've discovered something, which of course they have not. But I want to point out before I go any further that AB Science has done a very thorough, very complete debunk of the Chris UK video. And you'll find a link to that in the comments. It's well worth watching. I highly recommend it. So with that, let's watch some of Chris UK's video and see if we can spot the problem. that mean we're not at a constant velocity so humans should feel the rotation of the earth? That is interesting. It's an interesting one. <laughs> yes. If you're on the edge of this sphere, like a human being, mm -hmm. okay. you would surely be experiencing deceleration yes. Yes, and yes, acceleration. Exactly. exactly. How does astrophysics at your level uh, explain that? This physics is talked about by physicists, never ever in association with the rotation we are supposed to be on. 
see three lectures in the description from the well-known physicist Michael von Bison. He explains this physics from simple in lecture one to in-depth maths in lectures two and three. Astrophysics runs through calculation after calculation, computation after computation, ignoring one movement, one physics, the physics of all the rotations going around the sun. At the equator, you are revolving around with Earth at a thousand mile an hour. At the same time, you and the Earth are travelling around the Sun at 67,000 miles an hour. The relationship between the two velocities changes as the day progresses. That change is constant. That constant change is ignored by physics when it comes to the globe and space. The physics of you on this rotation, Earth, with Earth moving around the Sun. This physics is called rigid body rotation with translation. First vector, 67,000 mile per hour around the Sun. Vector two, 1,000 mile per hour as Earth revolves. Resultant vector, adding the two vectors. Repeat for all four positions in 24 hours. All positions have different resultant vector values. At the top it's midday, at the bottom it's midnight. A massive difference in velocities. This is a graphical representation of the two constant velocity vectors. Each movement is 15 degrees of rotation in one hour. See the resultant vector, the red dash line. It changes in length as you rotate with Earth. The increase in velocity is shown here. Acceleration value from point to point here. The increase in velocity from point to point here. The Newton force value for 100 kilograms here. Note the direction of the acceleration and force changes constantly in relation to you. It's self evident that this physics is taking place. Be on a rotation that is moving. Go and search for any report, article, calculations that takes account of this physics in relation to you rotating on a globe that is moving around the sun. This shows this change in velocity and describes in any way how it is countered by any force. I don't think you will find one. I've looked. It's not just about acceleration. Chris UK is having a hard time understanding reference frames and what we actually feel. We feel acceleration. We don't feel motion. Without acceleration, there is no force. We know that from Newton's laws. So let's do a quick thought experiment and see if we can explain this. We've got a truck that's stationary and my friend Socrates is standing on the truck, so he's stationary. I've also got a rotating disc mounted to the truck and the disc is rotating with a tangential velocity of 40 miles per hour attached to that wheel are two balls the only force 
those balls will feel is the centrifugal force as a result of the rotation. That's all. We've got this arranged so that we can release the balls at those points marked X. And what happens when we do that, Socrates will simply see each ball move at 40 miles an hour, one toward him, one away from him. What happens if Socrates is on the ground? Well, he's stationary, and so is the truck, and so is the uh, disc, other than its rotation, so he sees nothing different. The balls still appear to move at 40 miles per hour, one forward, one rearward. What happens if we put Socrates back on the truck, and this time we let the truck move forward at a constant velocity of 20 miles per hour? Now bear in mind, we are not accelerating or decelerating. The truck is moving at a constant velocity. The disc is spinning at a constant tangential velocity of 40 miles per hour. Does the rotation of the disc change because the truck is moving? No, of course not. It stays constant. So what will Socrates see as long as he's on that truck? Well, he'll see exactly the same thing he saw when the truck was stationary. There will be no change in perceived change by him in the velocity of those balls. He will still see one moving toward him at 40 miles an hour and one moving away from him at 40 miles an hour. What happens if we put Socrates on the ground and let the truck go past him? Well, now we've got a totally different situation. Now Socrates will see the 20 mile per hour truck speed added to the velocity of the ball moving forward and 20 miles an hour taken away from the velocity of the ball moving rearward. But the important thing to keep in mind is this. The angular velocity of that disc never changed. The tangential velocity of that disc never changed. The linear motion of the truck, as long as it is not accelerating or decelerating, has absolutely no effect on the force that those balls felt before they were released. They felt simply and only the centrifugal force. That's it. Here are the key points. We are in the non-inertial reference frame of our rotating, orbiting Earth. Because we're in that non-inertial reference frame, we experience the fictitious forces like centrifugal force and Coriolis force but we do not experience any linear velocities. Velocity alone is not something we can feel. It doesn't result in any acceleration and it is therefore immaterial to us. We never know what's happening. The largest effect that we feel arises from our rotation about our axis and that's the most noticeable at the equator. In fact, you will weigh about 0.3% less at the equator than you would at either of the uh, poles. But we also experience other accelerations, like the effect of our moon, our orbit around the sun, uh, in addition, other motions within the, within the galaxy, uh, and the motion of the galaxy itself. But all of those accelerations are very, very small, so small that we can completely ignore them. I've done some calculations just to see what this amounts to. And feel free to pause the video and peruse all of these numbers if you like, but I'll call your attention to the ones that are important. Our axial centrifugal acceleration, and that's what I talked about just a moment ago, is 0.034 meters per second squared. Compare that to a gravitational acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. You can see that's about 0.3%, as I said. But we are orbiting the sun. Now at our center of mass, which is the radius of our orbit, the orbital centrifugal acceleration and the sun's gravitational effect balance each other out. We are in free fall around the sun at about uh, 
meters per second squared. But as the Earth rotates on its axis, things change. At solar noon, we are slightly closer to the sun. And the centrifugal acceleration is reduced a little bit. And the gravitational effect is increased a little bit. On the other hand, at local midnight, we are further away from the sun. So the centrifugal acceleration is a little greater and the sun's gravity is a little smaller. How much? Well, the net result of combining orbital centrifugal acceleration with the sun's gravitational effect results in a difference at local noon or local midnight of about 0.8 millionths of a meter per second squared. Essentially indistinguishable. We certainly would never notice it and I think you would even have a hard time trying to measure it. Now at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. of course we have we are at the point where the earth is in free fall. So there is no effect whatsoever. The force uh, at that point it would all be uh, perpendicular to us anyway for all intent. Hopefully this helps everyone understand why the application of a concept like rigid body rotation with translation is completely the wrong way to look at the physics of orbiting bodies. And again, please have a look at A.B. Science's uh, video. He did a great job. So with that, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. There's a link to our Patreon. It's also in the comments section. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey, Gladys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We're out of here. Uh -huh.